It's 107.5 WGCI, the size number one for hip-hop and r and I am your host, Kyle Santillian. Right now on the Zoom, I have Mr. Graham Moore. Listen, the director of this new film, The Outfit. Very excited about seeing this film. And we're going to get into the movie. But before we do all of that, man, uh, Graham, this is your hometown, Chicago, man. How's it feel to be home? Uh, it feels great to be home. I'm going to see uh, my parents tonight, my whole extended family. I'm going to run around the old stomping grounds. Um, it's a film about Chicago. It's a film set in Chicago. And uh, I, as a hometown boy, this is, this is what I love to do. Yeah, really quick. What neighborhood are you from? I grew up in Lincoln Park, um, which, okay, it sounds really Tony and sort of fancy now, but in 1981 <laughs> when I was born, it was, it was not quite what it is now. I feel like I have to touch that. <laughs> Lincoln Park. Understood, understood. Because I go back and it's like, there's like a soap store down the street from my mom's house. You know, right. I feel like, you know a neighborhood's changing when there's a soap store. That's what you <laughs> have to get. There's a whole other thing going on. When, a when store I'm with there. nothing but different types of soaps, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's how you know things have changed. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So let's talk about the outfit, man. Very interesting movie set in Chicago. Uh, you know, we're talking about a guy who's a straight and narrow guy. You know, he's a tailor. All he wants to do is make nice suits of high quality. And he finds himself in a situation where these gang wars are going on around him. And he has to figure out his way to just kind of maintain himself in the craziness, craziness that's around him. Um, The one gang is using his shop as a drop spot for their money and things of that nature. And then when they get into it with the other gangs, he finds himself in the middle. Correct. That is that is a perfect description of the movie. I'm going to I'm going to start stealing that when I have. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Tell me a little bit about why with this movie. You know, honestly, it was inspired by a real story I heard about. Uh, This is true um, that the first bug, the first bug the FBI ever planted to get at the mob First bug in FBI history was planted in Chicago in Mm. 1956 inside a tailor shop. Mm. Um, And I read about that and said, oh, that's amazing. Well, what's the story behind that? Um, And and so that inspired this whole thing. You know, the, 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 the cops, the FBI knew that the gangsters were... They would go into the back of the tailor shop and they'd have their conversations there. They would have meetings there. They would drop things off for each other. Um, and that that was a way to get at them. And so it felt like using a sort of tailor shop was this exciting way of, of sort of putting a new lens on the kind of great crime thrillers that I always grew up loving. Like I, I love yeah. I love sort of twisty, turny crime gangster films. And so it felt like a sort of cool and new way into that story by telling a, a gangster story, not from the perspective of the of the mobsters, but instead from the perspective of this gentle Taylor, who's just trying to to make these beautiful things and and not get involved. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I can imagine that a lot of people can relate to the story because I think there's a lot of things that go on just in people's neighborhoods. And you might be a good, hardworking citizen trying to go to work every day, try not to get caught up in the things going on around you, but you know it's crazy. Like, I mean, we live in Chicago, so we know, you know, there's gangs in Chicago. But even if you didn't want to take it that far, just to just the balance of trying to be a good person amongst all of the bad, crazy things going on around you. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a perfect way of looking at it. And something we all sort of deal with, right? I mean, there's, look, there's there's bad people in the world. There are bad people out there. And I think we all, in some ways, I was really interested in the idea of complicity, you know, and what level to function in the world, to what degree do we all have to turn a blind eye to something? Do we all right. have to pretend we didn't hear something that we heard? Right. Um, pretend we didn't see something that we saw. Do we, do we to what degree do we all have to kind of, close our eyes and shut our ears to things to sort of get along in the world and not get involved. And then, and then what's the line you can't cross? What's the line where you say, no, I can't pretend this isn't happening anymore. I can't pretend this isn't happening around me. I can't pretend I didn't see that. I can't pretend I didn't hear that. Sure. This is happening and I got to do something about it. I love the fact that you're kind of doing another um, period piece. You know what I mean? I feel like the gangster period pieces were something that were very popular, late 80s, early 90s, you know what I mean? With things like Casino, with things like Goodfellas and all of these different movies. And I, I'm, I'm trying to think, I don't know if in recent years has been that type of film made that captures the, the, those period pieces of these gangsters. No, not as much. It's a genre that I really love. I mean, I, I love these kind of, 
twisty, turny crime stories where right. you know everyone's double crossing someone. Movies like this that we always talked about as being like a, a chess match. You know, every character is sort of playing a game of chess with each other and trying to outsmart each other and trying to trick each other. Um, and you know, you you get so much danger and tension from the the constant one-upsmanship of these kind of very smart crafty people yeah absolutely and i look i read a little bit before we came on here today and i saw that even within your own family there was some sort of connection with maybe your grandfather or some of the families that used to uh you know come up back in the day in the new york new jersey area can you tell me a little bit about that yeah, that's right. Um, when I was growing up, um, I was really close to my grandfather. My my parents split up when I was seven, and um, I my my grandfather, my mom's dad, became this really important kind of father figure in my life. You know, the first some of my first memories of ever going to the movie theater were with my grandfather. My grandfather was the guy who who first taught me how to tie a tie uh, when I was a kid. You know, he was such a good soul. Um, I think he was maybe the gentlest, most kind man I have ever known. Um, he was a doctor mm -hmm. uh, in a small town uh, and he had this little kind of corner store sort of family medical practice. And one of his patients was the notorious Jersey mobster, Jerry Katina. Mm. Um, and so it was always this thing when I was a kid, you know, my grandma would always say to him, She'd say, how do, how, what are you doing? How are you letting this, this killer walk through the doors uh, all the time? How do you do this? How do you treat this man? Why are you taking him as a patient? And I, I, it's funny, I remember it so vividly. My grandfather would always say, he'd say, he's never been anything but a gentleman to me. Right. And it was, uh, it was always this big sort of part of a of, of family dynamic of, you know, was my grandfather sort of pretending he didn't know what this guy was really up to but it was it was pretty obvious i mean this was this wasn't like a debatable situation it was very clear who this guy was and what he was doing right. um and and it always seems so interesting to me you know what were the conversations going on be behind closed doors between a guy like my grandfather and a guy like this mobster it's funny because I think of like um, going back again to these type of films, with a television show with the Sopranos when they would go to the doctor's office and have their meetings because they knew that those were places they couldn't bug, so to speak. And I'm wondering if your grandfather ever had those kind of circumstances where he goes in there to treat the mobster, then the mobster says, all right, step out the room. I need to have a meeting with this guy over here. You know, it's funny. I don't know. I mean, he'd never talk about it. He was very kind of quiet about what happened when the mobsters I'm came sure. in. He really liked them and he would treat them and he would do house calls. You know, he would go to their homes and they um, they seemed to really like him. I he And he never talked about it. He never said a word. He never said a right. single bad word about them. Uh, he, I didn't know if he sort of got some, three, you know, my grandfather was always this sort of really straight laced law abiding guy. I don't know if he got a sense of thrill out of it being sure. around these guys or, um, or what it was that they said when he was there that maybe they, they shouldn't have been talking about. Yeah, for sure. And maybe there's the kind of guys you don't tell them you're not going to service them either. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't say, oh, you know, my schedule's all full up this week. You yeah. make yeah, I'm not going to take you as a client today. And no, I don't think you say that to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the outfit, the movie is in theaters on March 11th. We want everybody in Chicago to definitely check it out. Um, I'm just loving it. You know what I mean? Just the whole concept of it, the theme of it, the storyline of it. And for everybody that has not seen it, try to keep an eye out for little clues here and there. You're talking about, you know, some gems or maybe some Easter eggs or little things that maybe kind of help you along with the story. We want everybody to keep an eye out for those, correct? Yes, it's it's a tricky one. It's a it's a puzzle till the till the last frame. So I'm excited for people to to watch it once, and then maybe you get to go watch it again, and it, it means something different. I think the second time. Absolutely. All right. Uh, anything else you want to say to the people of Chicago watching? This is your hometown. I want to give you the last word to speak to Chicago. Uh, thank you for having me back home. I I I love being home, and I'm 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 so proud to come from this place. And there it is. Mr. Graham Moore, writer, director, the outfit in store, not in stores, but in theaters on the 18th. We want everybody to go check it out. Thank you for your time. Definitely appreciate you today. Thank you. Really appreciate Congratulations it. Congratulations on a great film, too. Thank you so much. For sure.